chapter 5 food or something to eat there's a difference between food and something to eat just as there's a difference between diet and nutrition most folks would define diet as the food that is eaten and they would go on to say that a good diet equals good health I'd like us to be a little more precise in our common journey along the continuum of consumption. Diet is the food that is consumed. That's right so far. But nutrition is the food that is consumed that the cells and tissues of the body can utilize. And that is a most important addition. You can have a very large diet in terms of food consumed and be literally starving your body in terms of nutrition. So now you might think the proper formula should read good diet plus good nutrition equals good health that's pretty close but still not quite right the correct formula would be good nutrition plus good assimilation equals good health of course if someone rates good on the nutrition consumption it follows that such a person's diet will also be good having agreed upon a working formula let's establish why we eat or rather, what should be the real reasons why we eat. We all know most folks determine the items in their diet by taste alone. We eat something because it tastes good. But the real reasons why we eat should be to gain new cells and rebuild the various body tissues. To get starch to heat our bodies the necessary oils to lubricate the machinery of our bodies and fibrous matter to keep our tubing clean and to make our tissues pliable to provide a means of circulation for our blood corpuscles. In short, to keep our body machine in good working order. It must be admitted that all this is not easy to do with the type of junk that passes for food in the average supermarket. The American diet explains, perhaps, why more than 80 nations of the world have a lower death rate than we do in the United States. A hundred or even 50 years ago, your grandparents or parents had an easier time relating to Mother Nature. Their water was not pure and unpolluted. Their water was pure and unpolluted. When they inhaled deeply, they were not taking in carbon monoxide fumes. Their food was grown organically, often in their own gardens. The soil was all well manured and the fruits and vegetables had no residues of poisonous sprays, waxes and chemical treatments. Eggs came from healthy chickens, eating worms, bugs and natural grains. The wheat for bread contained as high as 24% of protein. Candies, soft drinks, and canned foods were luxuries for the rich and processed foods were all but unknown. But today, eggs are usually laid by chickens who never see the light of the sun and eat chemically treated mash. Much so-called enriched white bread has lost more than 40 vital nutritional elements, including vitamin E and in turn has been loaded up with chemicals. Our depleted soil is hyped up with chemical fertilizations. Our depleted soil is hyped up with chemical fertilizers. Many meat and dairy products are permeated with DDT, preservatives, hormones, and drugs, and chemicals. To relate to Mother Nature today requires a real effort. You're better off at a health food store, but if the supermarket is your only recourse, you can find something to eat, although you'll be pushing your shopping cart past most of the shelves. The Dick Gregory Shopping List. Walk on by the frozen food counter. That means no TV dinners or frozen fruits and vegetables. These are not quick frozen foods, but rather processed foods with preservatives, added, and other various and sun-dry chemical treatments. Let me give you a simple example. Take frozen French fried potatoes. If you have ever peeled a fresh potato, you will know that the potato turns brown wherever you touch it in the process of peeling. Yet the potatoes you see in the freezing compartment are peeled, sliced, and whiter than the average suburb. Have you ever thought why? Because the potatoes are treated and bleached to give them the snow white color. Walk on by the canned foods also. They too have been heated and treated. 
thus destroying all of the important life-giving elements. That's how I know Popeye is a fraud. He always eaten canned spinach. There's no way he could get anything other than an impacted colon from that diet. If he was munching on raw spinach leaves, I could believe him. Though it may sound strange coming from me, I advise you also to walk past the canned and bottled fruit and vegetable juices. They too have been heated and treated with preservatives. Anything that has been pasteurized must be bypassed. The pasteurizing process destroys the enzymes, which in turn renders the food useless to the body machine. So bypass pasteurized vinegar and honey. Only pure apple cider vinegar and pure unrefined honey should be purchased. Speaking of processed juices, one of my examples is frozen orange juice. It is obvious that additives are placed in frozen orange juice. How many times have you read in the newspaper that citrus farmers in California or Florida feared that an unexpected drop in temperature would ruin their crop of oranges? Heating pots are placed strategically in the orchids in case of such emergencies, and when the temperature drops to freezing, the pots are lighted in an effort to save the crops. If that's what freezing does to oranges, doesn't frozen orange juice seem rather suspect to you? Continue on, bypassing the breakfast food shelf. Breakfast cereals are completely devitalized. But don't be discouraged. Some things in cereal, some things in the cereal line are good for you. A good general rule to follow in shopping is caveat emptor or let the buyer beware. Unfortunately, that is still the attitude in America rather than the more moral position. Let the seller be honest. You will arrive eventually at the fruit and vegetable counter, the nut and seed rack. Among these nuts, fruits, etc. is everything necessary for your diet, with the single exception of pure water. The chief constituents in good nutrition and assimilation are proteins, or more accurately, amino acids, carbohydrates, sugars and starches, fats and minerals and vitamins and they are all available here when using your fruits and vegetables be suspicious of chemicals and sprays and use the disinfecting process described in chapter 9 you might want to carry in your wallet or purse a shopping list which includes the minerals in order of their importance and suggest the foods which supply them the list is taken from pages 33 to 34 of N.W. Walker's diet and salad suggestions, slightly modified to exclude all animal products. Cal calcium, unsalted almonds, carrots, dandelions, turnips, spinach, oranges, okra, cauliflower, tomatoes, garlic, parsnips, all berries, all nuts except peanuts and cashews, apples, potatoes, apricots, phosphorus, kale, large white reddish, asparagus, sorrel, watercress, brussels sprouts, garlic, savoy cabbage, carrots, cauliflower, squash, cucumbers, leeks, lettuce, turnips, brazil nuts, walnuts, huckleberries, blackberries, cherries, black mission figs, oranges, limes, potassium, carrots, celery, parsley, spinach, beets, cauliflower, leeks, garlic, potatoes, sorrel, squash, tomatoes, turnips, oranges, lemons, apricots, bananas, cherries, dates, grapes, huckleberries, figs, pears, peaches, plums, raspberry, watermelon, pomegranates, olives, sulfur, brussels sprouts, watercress, kale, horseradish, cauliflower, cabbage, chives, garlic, sorrel, cranberries, raspberries, pineapple, currants, apples, brazil nuts, filberts, sodium, celery, carrots, spinach, tomatoes, strawberries, radishes, squash, lettuce, dandelion, leeks, cucumbers, beets, turnips, apples, apricots, watermelon, huckleberries, bears, oranges, grapefruit, lemons, dates, cherries, grapes, chlorine, beets, cabbage, celery, garlic, horseradish, parsnips, sweet potatoes, tomatoes, avocados, dates, pomegranates, coconut, fluorine, 
unsalted almonds, carrots, beet tops, turnips, tops, turnip tops, dandelion, spinach, celery tops, cauliflower, cabbage, watercress, parsley, cucumbers, magnesium, carrots, celery, cucumbers, unsalted almonds, dandelions, garlic, leeks, kale, lettuce, tomatoes, spinach, lemons, oranges, apples, blackberries, bananas, figs, pineapples, Brazil nuts, pecans, walnuts, iron, lettuce, leeks, carrots, dandelions, radishes, asparagus, turnips, cucumbers, horseradish, tomatoes, almonds, avocados, strawberries, raisins, figs, watermelon, apricots, cherries, huckleberries, walnuts, Brazil nuts, apples, grapes, particularly Concord, pineapple, oranges, magnesium, parsley, carrots, celery, beets, cucumbers, chives, watercress, almonds, apples, apricot, walnuts, silicone, cucumbers, lettuce, parsnips, asparagus, tips, beet tops, dandelion, horseradish, leeks, okra, parsley, green peppers, radishes, spinach, watercress, strawberries, cherries, apricots, apples, watermelon, figs, iodine, spinach, asparagus, carrot, carrots, green peppers, pineapple, okra, turnip greens, cucumbers, watermelon. Bear in mind that all of the items on your shopping list are considered in the raw form. Take horseradish, for example. I am, by all means, not referring to prepared bottled horseradish, but rather to raw horseradish, which you will grind or liquefy yourself in a blender and take in half teaspoon quantities at a time. Nuts are uncooked and unsalted. Do rule out peanuts and cashews. Peanuts are legumes, not nuts. And they have an acid action in the body. Cashews are seeds of the cashew fruit and are hard to digest. Other items not mentioned on the shopping list are also good for you. Melons are probably best be eaten alone in as large quantities as you desire. And don't forget sun-dried fruits, especially when fresh fruits are not available. But be sure you are getting dried fruits that you have not that have not been treated with sulfur. Dried fruits should be placed in a bowl, barely cover, covered with distilled or pure water and soaked until they are soft. If we take the same list of materials given above, but focus on the top five foods which provide each mineral, we find some new items cropping up. Calcium, whole sesame seeds, kelp, Irish moss, agor, dulse, phosphorus, rice bran, wheat bran, pumpkin and squash seeds, wheat germ, wheat germ potassium, dulse, kelp, Irish moss, soybean, dried, lima beans, dried, sulfur, kale, watercress, brussels sprouts, horseradish, cabbage, sodium, kelp, Irish moss, olives, dulse, hot dried red pepper, chlorine, ripe tomatoes, celery, iceberg lettuce, kelp, spinach, magnesium, kelp, wheat bran, Ger wheat germ, almonds, soybeans, iron, dulse, kelp, rice bran, wheat bran, pumpkin and squash seeds, silicone, lettuce, parsnips, asparagus, dandelion, rice bran, iodine, kelp, dulse, agar, sweet chard, turnip greens. Although the lists are nearly identical in some cases, as with sulfur, there are some items on the second list which may be somewhat unfamiliar. But all of these foods are important to proper nutrition. I am referring particularly to seed, sesame, pumpkin, and squash, to which I would also add uh, sunflower. To which I would also add sunflower. And the sea vegetation, kelp, iris marsh, and dulse. The most important item for you on the cereal shelf is wheat germ. 
Wheat germ is the embryo, which makes up only about 2% of the grain, but it is the most important percentage nutritionally. Wheat germ contains the E, B, and A vitamins and is the richest source of nourishment for the body's growth and reproduction. Many nutritional experts believe that sea vegetation contains all the vitamins and all the minerals if used in their natural form and in combination. They excel all other sources of vitamin and minerals, natural or artificial. Dulce is a red seaweed gathered for centuries by the Irish off their coastline. Kelp is the catch-all name for a variety of large brown seaweeds abundantly available off the coast of Japan and along the west coast of the United States. Government documents have reported that oil extracts, extracted from seaweed contain 1,000 times more vin vitamins A and D than an equal quantity of cod liver. Which, of course, stands to reason the seaweed is where the cod's liver got it in the first place. Sea plants contain not only an abundance of iodine, iron, copper, mang manganese, and cobalt, all essential in the formation of hemoglobin, but also all of the vitamin B complex, so important to anyone suffering from anemia. One cannot help wondering why sea vegetation like dulse and kelp is not more universally available and why it has not placed synthetic or artificial manufactured chemical products as multiple vitamins. I feel the answer is simply that sea vegetation is cheap and readily available and its use would not yield the large profits the chem chemical vitamin industry demand. I feel the answer is simply that sea vegetation is cheap and readily available and its use would not yield the large profits the chemical vitamin industry demands. It is worth a trip to the health food store just to get dose and kelp. They certainly, they're certainly a better addition to all items in your diet than table salt and it would be a good idea to get into the habit of sprinkling dose and kelp powder on your foods. You'll be getting vitamin A, B, C, and D in abundance, along with vitamin E, the anti-sterility vitamin, and vitamin K, which has an anti-hemorrhaging effect. All by all means, and by all means, if you suffer from goiter or goiter trouble, run, don't walk to the nearest health food store and get some dulcet kelp. Seaweed, if you recall, if you will recall some of the stories that fascinated you in your childhood days, you will no doubt remember the phrase, open sesame. It was a magical, incan it was a magical incantation, and the very mention of the word sesame unlocked a multitude of mysteries and charms. The person who possessed sesame was the holder of many riches. The magic word refers to the sesame seed. Its nutritional properties were, were yielded in high esteem in the Orient that it became synonymous with magic. Sesame seeds are valuable of their high content of calcium and phosphorus combined with their complete protein. They contain 50% more protein amino acid content than meat. Milk made from sesame seeds, a recipe for which appears later in this book, is far superior to cow's milk for human consumption. It is further improved when combined with coconut milk. Sesame seeds do not putrefy or rot in the intestines as meat does. So those who use them avoid the dangers of constipation and the toxic poisoning of the system Sesame seeds, by the way, are a good base for an eggless mayonnaise for those who are adopting the wise practice of a non-animal product diet. The seeds may be liquefied in the blender and combined with honey and lemon juice. When purchasing sesame seeds, look for imported ones. Domestic seeds are more likely to have been grown with chemical fertilizer than those from South and Central America, China, or the Near East. 
And added benefit of sesame seeds is they are cholesterol free. Pumpkin seeds and squash seeds are perhaps the tastiest of the seeds. The squash seeds is a high fat seed, which is exceptionally digestible and full of nutrition. It is rich in fat soluble vitamins and lecithin, a source of vitamin B which metabolizes fats and helps to cure fatigue and weakness as well as skin disorders. Until recently, most sunflower seeds in the United States were consumed by the parrot population. They were even referred to as poly seeds, and of course it is not uncommon for a parrot to outlive its owner. The unhipped parrot stood around saying, Polly wants a cracker. <laughs> the vitamin content of sunflower seeds is highly exceptional. The vitamin content of sunflower seeds is exceptionally high. They have the vitamin B complex and vitamins D and E in abundance. Sunflower seeds contain three times the protein of meat and like sesame seeds, they do not putrefy. They are also cholesterol free. The mineral content of sunflower seeds is high as any farmer can tell you. The sunflower seeds plants, the sunflower seed plant feeds so enthusiastically on the minerals in the soil that it quickly exhausts all the available supply. The mineral content of sunflower seeds is high as any farmer can tell you. The sunflower plant feeds so enthusiastically on the minerals in the soil that it quickly exhausts all the available supply. These minerals are stored in the seeds since the roots of the sunflower plant go down deeper than those of most vegetables. Sunflower seeds are a source of minerals not found in vegetables. While I have been noticing more natural seeds and nuts in the supermarket, it is a shame that 99% of all the items offered by consumption are processed junk. I do hope readers of all these pages will rise, will raise a fuss with supermarket managers in their community and let them know that if they store pure, raw, natural foods, it will profit them. Drug stores should be pressured into stocking natural vitamin supplements as least along with, if not instead of, the artificial chemical supplement. I long to see the day when all supermarkets and drugstores become truth health food stores. Then the markets will have no reason to call themselves super. Coffee, tea, or milk. You've noticed I have avoided animal products, milk, eggs, and cheese, and the like. I can hear some of you wondering right now, but I always thought milk was the perfect food. It probably is for a calf. Few human mothers would consent to nurse a calf, but they let the cow nurse their own babies. As Dr. Paul Georgie of the University of Pennsylvania said in November 2nd, 1972, issue of Jet, human milk is for the human infant. Cow's milk is for calves. Although milk is generally praised as the calcium source, the most important ingredient is a substance called casein, which furnishes a number of amino acids for supplying the protein molecules to build bone structure that will carry the body's weight. The casein content in mother's milk is appropriate for a human baby, but in cow's milk, the casein content is appropriate for building a baby calf. Cow's milk contains 300 times more casein than mother's milk. It is intended to grow a calf into the adult weighing about three quarters of a ton. Cow's milk is designed to double the weight of a calf in a period of six to eight weeks. A human baby requires six to seven months to double its weight. It is a little wonder that so many babies feed on cow's milk having excess of mucus, as in running noses, congested chest, etc. Casein, by the way, is the material that makes the finest quality glue for work, for woodwork. Cabinet makers can use it more effectively than human babies. So it's probably the milk and oatmeal that sticks to your ribs. 
the same indictments apply to milk as to other pasteurized products. The heating and pasteurized destroys the enzymes. It is possible to get certified raw milk and raw milk cheese at the health food store, but I would recommend its use only for household pets for reasons noted above. The singular exception I make to the rejection of animal products is plain yogurt. Yogurt is rich in pre-digesting proteins and vitamins B and B2. It's just that it establishes an acid medium, an acid medium in the intestinal tract, which inhibits the growth of harmful and putrefaction causing bacteria. In other words, yogurt replaces the good bacteria, which may have been lost in flushing out the colon. Having disposed of milk, what about coffee and tea? Both coffee and tea are stimulants and both contain caffeine. That alone is enough for me to rule out the use of coffee and standard teas. I have read studies comparing caffeine to morphine in its destructive properties. Just as I wouldn't support the neighborhood pusher, I'll not let the grocer push coffee or commercial tea in my direction. A small drop of caffeine injected into an animal's skin will produce death in a few minutes. A very, very small amount injected into the brain will create constant convulsions. Who knows that? Who knows what effect caffeine has in the coffee cup? Also, coal tar from coffee has the same dangerous characteristics as the coal tar found in tobacco. And finally, coffee increases the flow of hydrochloric acid in the stomach. Deaths and cancers of the stomach and bladder outnumber lung cancer deaths in this country and it would seem that there could be a relationship to the coffee drinking habit. At the health food store you will find a dandelion coffee some people regard as an excellent substitute and a great variety of herb teas, ginsengs, chamomile, peppermint, alfalfa, sarsaparilla, golden sea flaxseed, safflower, and fenugreek to name a few. Next time you're looking for something to eat, try some real food from mother nature and you'll find the food your mama offers is really something. Next time you're looking to, for something to eat, try some real food from mother nature and you'll find the food your mama's offering really something.